Hi, this is Dr. Charles Bradley. Welcome to our Domino Facebook series. And we have a special edition today, and we have a special guest, Lynn Emerson with Matilda. Thanks for coming down. To Thanks discuss. for having me. Great to have you. It's uh, a very important topic, and it is part of our nutrition series. And this is uh, a presentation about grain-free diets being highly problematic in dogs. And Lynn brings her story of Matilda, who is a service dog, of course. And we can get right into it. And Lynn, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what, what went on? And the timeline is very important, as we talked about before, how suddenly we got into trouble. Yes, um, actually, so Matilda was initially diagnosed with just mitral valve dysplasia on June 6th um, and was absolutely fine, had no dilated cardiomyopathy. She had had an echocardiogram and a chest film. So we knew at that point her heart, other than this minor mitral valve dysplasia, was fine. Um, and on July 7th, um, we actually walked through those very doors over there um, because she had had literally just a, a cough, which was more like a clearing of the throat, which um, it's great that we can do it this way because it literally was this. <laughs> so it wasn't <laughs> not, a dog. Not, not very dramatic. Nothing dramatic right. at all. But right. I had taken a stethoscope and listened to her, and what I heard was dramatic, so I brought her in. But she walked in wagging her tail. She was very happy. If you looked at her, you wouldn't have thought she was sick. Wow. So in the yeah. period of literally 30 days, this dog went from being, in, in, in essence, very healthy to when we brought her in here, she was in congestive heart failure. We found out after Dr. Cruz examined her and we did a chest x-ray. Um, and she was in heart failure um, and she had dilated cardiomyopathy. So how would you define heart failure for her? our audience, what did you notice? Um, what I noticed, again, was um, with the stethoscope, I heard, um, because I have a medical background, what sounded like AFib, so right. an abnormal rhythm okay. of the heart, mm -hmm. um, and what I would call rawls, but what you call crackling. Okay. So the sound in her breathing of a crackling. So there was definitely something going on in her chest, which we now, which was fluid mm -hmm. in the chest. Um, and her breathing at that point was also very rapid. Oh, okay. Um, and her heart rate was very, very rapid. So if you had not had a, a medical background, Lynn, do you think that you would have been able to catch that your dog was actually sick? Or is no. it something that could be easily hidden and and occult, if you will. Actually, and that's the problem with this this problem with right. dilated cardiomyopathy. Yeah. In the early stages, it's very silent. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that even a lot of vets, and you know, unfortunately, you don't hear it. It can and, be hard. Now, what do you think was the cause? Um, it actually, we now know because Matilda was diagnosed with taurine deficiency. I her see. taurine was tested when she was admitted to Angel, and her taurine was low. Is that to do with the food she was eating? Yes. One yeah. of the first questions Dr. Cruz actually asked okay. me here yes. was, is she being fed grain free? And ah. I said yes. And okay. at that point, unfortunately, I knew exactly where she was going because oh, you knew that. I had just read Dr. Freeman's article. Okay. And Dr. Freeman, who's a nutritionist at Tufts Veterinary School. Yes. Right? And okay. Dr. Freeman had written a, a great article about what she calls beg diets, which are boutique, exotic, and grain-free. Oh, right. And I ironically had decided to switch Matilda's diet. Even more ironically, her new food was delivered to my door that morning as I was sitting here. And as soon as Dr. Cruz asked me if she was being fed grain-free, I knew where we were going, and I'm going to get very emotional because right. I burst into tears mm -hmm. um, because what I occurred to me was I, I did this to my dog. You're right, the guilt. The, it was. The I guilt. felt very guilty. I yeah. chose to feed her this food. I, but you meant well. You chose to feed her because you believed that that was a good thing. I and did. That's one of uh, the points of this series is we don't do things... Uh, willingly or or uh, in in a targeted way, what we're really trying to do is to uh, improve our dog's health. So this is the whole thing about grain free. Grain free is not good. It's not at all good. Unfortunately, I believed what everybody else believed right. that we were doing a great thing. I actually paid more for <laughs> right. this food. I, I say ironic. that I paid a premium price for what co almost cost me the ultimate price. Wow. Um, and I believed it. And, and unfortunately, 
what I have now found out because I've done so much research into this is feeding her that diet is what caused her taurine deficiency. I see. And led to this dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, now, what did the cardiologist, when you became involved with the heart specialist, what was their comment on the food? To stop it immediately. Um, and we immediately transitioned her to their recommendations is to feed the legacy brands. Yes. Um, which are all the foods we've been told to hate. Right. Um, because we all read the label and we said that these are full of toxins and poisons and they're bad right. foods. but. Turns out that the legacy brands are where we're going again. Exactly. So we immediately transitioned her to Purina Pro Plan, okay. sensitive skin and stomach, yes. salmon and rice. Yes. Um, they actually said no lamb. Um, okay. But it was interesting because, again, you know, I had fed Purina for years and then made this huge mistake of switching mm -hmm. her to what I thought was such a great food. And you meant well. I did. And As yet we all it, do. <laughs> it almost killed her. Right. And all I thought of when I was sitting in that room over there was I did this to my dog and I could have prevented this. And what's interesting is I've heard estimates that the grain free piece of the market is very large, sixty to eighty percent, and I'm still seeing grain free advertised as a bonus, as a benefit. It's in, in major media. It's huge. And, and unfortunately, I think a part of it, too, is what I'm seeing is people believe their dogs have grain allergies. Um, right. And very few dogs are actually allergic to grains. That's and correct. We've covered that already. Yeah, and it's, it's so sad because Matilda is sensitive to chicken. We know that. We've done an elimination diet, okay. um, which is the only way to really confirm a, a food allergy, as you know. Absolutely. Um, and so she's, that's why she's on the salmon and rice, but she's... She's able to, to eat Purina. Royal Canin makes great hypoallergenic foods. There's, there's so many healthy foods you can feed your dog. So if you were talking to your neighbor and we're talking to our neighbors now, what would you tell them? What, what, did, what did you figure out about canine nutrition after this incident? Oh boy, um, let me tell you. I tell everybody, it's just not my neighbors. I actually stop people all the time when I see them and they tell me they have a dog and I say, what are you feeding them? Exactly. Um, and because I tell them about Matilda, and the beautiful thing in a way about this is if you catch it early, you can reverse it. So Matilda is actually getting better. That's, That's an it. important piece that uh, we'd love to hear about right. what actually happened. So she thankfully is getting better, but it's again, it's preventable. So what I do tell people is please don't feed grain free, don't feed exotic, you know, foods. And, you know, don't feed any of these, you know, what I call the bag diet, so the boutique brands. Right. And the reason that these legacy brands, as they call them, are being right. recommended is it's the money that these companies spend in hiring veterinary nutritionists, yes. toxicologists, yes. the money they spend on feeding trials. Research. The, exactly. The money that they pour into testing their ingredients and batch testing. That's important. It's, it's about, it's also about... Um, absorption. Yeah. So you can put anything into a bag, yeah. let's say. You know, dogs require 10 amino acids and 42 nutrients. So you can put anything into a bag, let's say, but if the dog has, can't absorb it, it doesn't do any good. So you can read all these lovely ingredients on a bag, but if the dog's not absorbing it, you're not feeding your dog. So I, I think you're saying what we have been saying is it's very dangerous to choose a food based on the bag writing and the ingredients. Because the words don't have a lot of value, and the ingredient list is just that. Exactly. A list. It, it, it means nothing, and so you have, to, you have to have something to base your trust on, and so what you have trust. to... Trust. That's the most important word. Right. I agree with that. And so the trust has to be in these larger brands, these with the legacy brands, which are Purina, Royal Canin, um, Eucanuba, Science Diet because they have all of those things that we want, the, mm. the science behind their foods. Right. And, and there's a reason that those dogs that are being fed those diets are not walking through the doors with dilated cardiomyopathy. Interesting. So what happened when you, <coughs> when you got this P 
pinned down by the cardiologist, which was about a month after the first incident. What happened as far as treatment? What would people expect to have to live through if their dog got oh. dilated cardiomyopathy? It, it's it's not fun. Um, so Matilda was hospitalized initially for two really? days. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yeah, I, I missed that. There's this was a very intense medical situation, and I started to read the file and. It takes just at least a half an hour just to read all the things that you and Matilda went mm. through. So can you imagine living that? And that was all because of a dietary choice. Right. So she was she was initially hospitalized for a, um, two days at Angel. They wanted to keep her longer, but they couldn't because she was Angel so... Angel is Angel Animal Medical Center. Angel An Am Medical Center Boston, in Boston. Which is the MSPCA. Um, and they um, thankfully were, you diagnosed her properly. We brought her home, we switched her diet, we started touring supplements. She was also on cardiac medication. So I see. she came home, she had to be medicated. She's still on medications, although we're reducing those now. So things are improving. They are improving okay. greatly. Um, she had to go back for repeat chest films to make sure she kept the fluid offloaded from her um, chest. She had to have repeat labs that we were doing here. So we're November. This is already four months you've been living this experience. Yes, which so. she's now had two more echocardiograms. I don't know how many lab tests we've done oh because we've had to check You're her. You're talking about a lot of money and a lot of time on, yes. your, on your behalf as well. It's, it's horrendous. Do you think you're going to get through this with Matilda? Um, I do, thank what, God. What's the expected uh, end game, say, a year out from now? Well, that's just it. We, we're very fortunate in that her last echocardiogram on November 8th, which you have from Dr. Cunningham, she's now seen at Tufts. Um, she's actually improving quicker than expected. Okay. Initially, they told me not to expect any um, improvement for six months. Wow. And, and at two months, we already saw improvement. That's encouraging. Her last echocardiogram, we saw even more improvement. Um, just for example, her ejection fraction when she was diagnosed was 11. Her ejection fraction on November 8th was 26. And that's a measure of the heart strength, right? Correct. The, the strength of the heartbeat. Correct. And she, the size of her heart has also decreased. So she's improving greatly. Dilated means an enlarged heart. So it's starting to come back to a more normal size. size. And the uh, sound of the heart is improving too. And we've had that with our other patient who has experienced cardiomyopathy the heart was not even strong enough to make a strong love dub that we could hardly hear it and that's normalizing now which is and that's what's so important is the di the difference between diet related dilated cardiomyopathy and what's called primary or hereditary dil or dilated cardiomyopathy primary dilated cardiomyopathy does not improve and that's true. Dilated or diet related does, and this is where so many people still want to say, "Oh, when they're denying this, is oh, it's genetic." Especially in Matilda, she's a Great Dane, and so many people would say, "Oh, she's a Great Dane. They just get dilated cardiomyopathy." Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They do, but in her case, this was definitely diet related. Well, I think that there's a, a, a great deal that has to be learned. And I think that there are some dogs where there was no taurine deficiency depicted or, or uh, confirmed, and yet the dogs responded to taurine. Yes. Or they uh, responded to dietary change and cardiac uh, medication. So I think the jury is still out, but I think the basic message is don't go down that grain-free road. Exactly. Don't even get started on that journey. Right, because I, I look back now and think, you know, if I had never done that, we wouldn't be here. You know, she would not be in this situation. And because we know her touring was low, we know she's responded to this treatment and she is getting better. Um, to answer your question, you know, a year from now, Dr. Cunningham's ex expectation is that she'll be, she should be back to baseline. Wow. Um, that would be great. But it's, yeah. you know, it's a long journey to get there, and it, and it is, it's a lot and if of... if you look at the percentage of a Great Dane's life, one calendar year is what, 20% of the life expectancy? It's oh. a huge chunk of time too, if you look at the longevity of the patient. But I just wanted to remind people about the FDA warning. I'll just read it out here because I wanna make sure everybody knows what we're talking about. So in July of 2018, the US, DA, US uh, FDA said that um, veterinary professionals 
are reporting canine dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a thinning of the heart muscle and an enlargement of the heart. And it was associated with certain foods, and those foods contained uh, peas, lentils, legume seeds, or other uh, um, legumes such as potatoes as the main ingredient. And uh, diets frequently list these, and they are called pulses, which is seeds of legumes. And it seems that that's not a good diet for dogs. And uh, early reports from the veterinary cardiology community indicated that dogs consistently ate these foods as their primary source of nutrition for time periods ranging from months to years. So translate that by, back into plain English. If you feed these foods for even a short period of time, it's possible, but I don't know if it happens in every dog because we don't have any uh, trials or research on this just yet, but it seems highly likely that there's going to be a population of dogs that eat grain-free diets that are going to get dilated cardiomyopathy. Mm. Then you have to start thinking about what is the quality of the food? And you mentioned the trust factor. The trust factor is really big and you have to make sure that you uh, trust the people that are designing the food, the people that are bringing the ingredients in, are they f doing feeding trials? And one of the things about the legacy brands is that they have fed these diets uh, for a long, long time, and they're well proven. So I'd like to ask you, just in closing, what would you say as your final comment to our audience? What is the take-home message, and what are the things to be think thinking about? Honestly, I, I would just say, you know, to, to ignore the marketing. Um, it, it's great, it's shiny, it's, you know, it's, it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, it sure but does. Um, it, it just ignore the marketing and, and do the safe thing for your dog, especially until we sort this all out. Matilda is one of the FDA case dogs. Her case oh, was reported so. to the FDA. So you don't want your dog to be Matilda. Um, it's, it's horrible. It's heart wrenching. It's emotionally a it's roller coaster. Terrible. It's financially draining. Um, and it's so much easier to just feed a safe food from one of the legacy brands you know it might not make you feel all warm and fuzzy um, but it it will at the end of the day when your dog lives a long healthy life perfect well thank you for coming in thank you I really appreciate you sharing your personal story because that is very powerful I can speak about these things but you coming in is going to magnify the message and please if you have uh, a chance to share this if uh, if it's meaningful to you please do so. Uh, this is Dr. Charles Bradley from Domino Veterinary Hospital. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.